on the peak. All way. Nice and easy on the peak. When I was five or six years old, I was around boats. And actually, I'd see all the old sailboats and things back in those days. And when I was in school, like all kids, uh, six or seven years old, and the teacher said, draw a picture of a, a horse, draw a picture of a car, draw a picture of a house, uh, draw a picture of a boat. You know, if you ask people to draw a picture of a boat, 95% of them will draw a picture of a sailboat. So I drew a picture of a gaff rig schooner. In other words, a two-masted gaff rig schooner. The sails didn't point like most sailboats. And I always wanted one through my whole life. For owner Ray Giovanelli, the Schooner America is the realization of a lifelong dream. The history of the schooner dates back to its predecessor's original construction in 1851. That year, it took its place in the world of sailboat racing by defeating every competitor by such a wide margin that the event was renamed the America's Cup. It just didn't win a race just a little bit, almost. Uh, it won so decisively because the technology in this boat was so far advanced over anything that anybody in the rest of the world had. Here, the racing boats now are being still copied off of this boat that was designed back in 1851. This new version of the America has some interesting advances of its own. Captain Alex Greenson explains. We're very traditional looking from the waterline up and uh, below the waterline, we have a very contemporary bottom. We've got a, a kind of a wing keel with a, a kind of a flattened bulb on the bottom of it um, with a spade rudder. It makes us much faster than a traditionally built schooner, um, but the concept behind the boat is we're planning on using the boat to uh, go to many places in as short a period of time as possible. So we wanted the boat to be fast and have the capacity to motor uh, virtually across the Atlantic Ocean, which uh, it is capable of doing. We have two uh, large six-cylinder diesel engines, 220 horsepower each, supplied to us uh, by John Deere Marine Engines. Uh, these engines are designed to run 24 hours a day, uh, and uh, they can run as high as 2,600 RPM, but we normally only operate them at about 1,800, which gives us about a nine to 10 knot uh, speed in the water, which is plenty for our purposes because we really only need to use them when we're ferrying from point to point and there's no wind. Now, interestingly enough, our primary power source for this boat is actually our batteries. We have a large number of batteries stored all throughout the boat underneath the floorboards and these batteries in turn supply an inverter system which then converts the 24 volt power from the batteries to 110 or 240 as may be required. Below deck, the schooner under continuing decoration and construction houses a crew of seven comfortably. Its amenities are what one might expect on a 20th century replica of America's finest sailing ship. The large kitchen is equipped with the right tools and enough space for almost any culinary creation. The dining room speaks of tradition and valor. The boat fought in three wars. It fought in the Civil War and it fought on both sides of the Civil War. It fought in the Spanish-American War. It fought in the First World War served 20 years at the Naval Academy, and of course it came to its end when President Roosevelt wanted it rebuilt and pulled it up in Annapolis and put a temporary shed over it. In 1942, a snowstorm came, I remember it as a kid, and collapsed the shed and smashed it to pieces. Now there really wasn't much left of the old boat at, at that time, but uh, the war was on, and so that was the end of the Schooner America. And now England believes that what happened in England in 1851 was so important 
that they're having a 150th anniversary. Do you know of any other race that happened that long ago that they're gonna celebrate it 150 years later? And here, this is the biggest sporting event ever held in the world. And uh, one of the reasons for building the boat was to represent this country uh, at the 150th anniversary in 2001. As an intended showpiece for American boating and industry on its Around the World project, the Schooner America is a story of one man's dream to restore a sense of pride in our heritage. The Schooner attracts spectators and sailors who want to learn more about this sailing tradition. I've got a good crew right now, um, and they're uh, working very hard at uh, trying to get the boat in show shape. And, uh, you know, I've been working uh, diligently trying to put together a competent crew and uh, the uh, folks that I have on the boat right now are very eager to participate in the whole project here and are working very hard to, to learn all of the aspects of sailing a, a big gap big boat like the America. My status here on the America as captain is very uh, hands-on. I'm involved uh, with all of the engineering with the varnishing. The owner of the boat, Mr. Ray, is also very hands-on, and he and I work together a lot on a lot of different things on the boat. Virtually every day, he and I both are out here with the crew doing varnish work, and then I'm doing preventive maintenance on the machinery, and I'm also trying to put together some procedures for the boat. The boat's brand new, and we're trying to procedurize, I mean, the simple things, like starting a generator. Um, and basically, a lot of what I do is training people on the boat. All right, if you guys could push us out as much as you can. Get a line here. We were down to Key West, and we were in Miami, and then we came up to Fort Lauderdale. This seems like the starting point of our trip. We're heading up north and then head overseas, but we'll go all the way up to Maine and around Maine. So th this is the first leg of the trip, uh, of the tour. Uh, that will last a year, and uh, I really uh, feel good about it. For the owner, captain, and crew of the America, this is an historic moment of their own. After months of preparation and training, the true test of crewmanship is yet to come. All hands make ready for the moment when the huge sails of the schooner America can be unleashed against the wind. Wind's going in the wrong direction and everything today, but we're going to have a good sail. We're sure it's going to be a good ride, and uh, I hope all the guests on the boat are going to enjoy it. And I, I know I'm, I'm just getting more excited. As soon as I get through this bridge, I'm going to do da 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 da. Um, easiest thing to do with the road? I've been uh, working on boats now for several years, on and off. I uh, went to Syracuse University and actually majored in acting. <laughs> a far stretch from the boating world. But uh, I started, I guess, about six or seven years ago, actually professional sailing on my summers off and uh, took time off when I transferred from school at one point. And it was a love that I acquired, a love for the sea and a love for the ocean uh, that kept drawing me back. And when I graduated from school, I decided instead of going into acting right away that this was going to be my passion for definitely a, a period of time working towards my captain's license. This is really the type of boat that I love. I have a passion for the old type of sailing, the traditional raising by hand, um, the work that's involved, not the roller furling, the, the real strength that it takes uh, both inward and outward to work on this kind of boat. It's uh, not a job that everyone can handle. Like many sea lovers, these crew members enjoy the hard work. Their ambitions and backgrounds vary, but they all agree the most exciting moments are when they set sail. Long days are normal aboard the Schooner America. The thrill of being aboard a replica of the most famous sailing ship America has ever built is enough to keep the adrenaline pumping. 
Carson, you all set with that sail? Okay, get ready on the four right away. Okay. Typically, there, you would find four sails on a, on a more modern style of schooner. Uh, you'd have the JT, which is a jib top, that's the very front sail. And then the in inner foresail would be a staysail. The second one on the foremast would be the foresail, and then you would have the main and the main mast in the rear. The reason why I came to America is it's a very traditional boat. Um, all my life I've been racing on a lot of plastic rockets, you know, these brand new sailboats that are just really, really thin and fragile. And we all know what happens to America cut boats in 15 knots of breeze. I wanted to be on a more traditional boat, something that had a lot of heritage, a lot of history, and explain it to other people as to why this was such a great and famous boat. My favorite uh, aspect of the job is when I'm underway and I'm driving the boat and navigating the boat and uh, that's when I have a lot of fun. I really enjoy that aspect of it. Equipped with satellite navigation, depth and wind instruments, the schooner America provides a modern contrast to its original counterpart built in 1851. I'll tell you, after you're on the dock for a month varnishing, uh, it's really a good feeling to get out here and sail the boat. It handles well. We look good now with all the varnish on it, but uh, she really does handle well. Okay, ready about? Ready. Helm's over. A job well done. America's crew puts the finishing touches on tightening her sail. Procedure is everything on a boat at sea, and the America is no exception. A display of friendship and teamwork exemplifies the feeling on board the schooner America, and it's time to relax for now.
day was a very special day for the schooner America. An idea which started as a dream in the mind's eye of Ray Giovannone is about to come true. By now, the local news stations have gotten wind of the four-masted antique replica making its way up the Georgia coast. Well, we're on our way to go out and pick up the Olympic torch and bring it into the state of Georgia. I'm just uh, real up about it, and uh, just something like this makes the two years that it's taken to build this boat uh, worthwhile all in one day. We're just south of Hilton Head Island and ready to turn around and go back in the mouth of the Savannah River. Ironically, as history goes, the original schooner America, after winning the 100 Guineas Cup race in 1851, was sold 10 days later. When the Civil War broke out in America, the Confederates bought it back from its European owner. Eventually, they sailed it straight into the port of Savannah, This is going to be uh, some experience. This is sort of a coming out for the boat, as well as the uh, bringing in of the flame for the Olympics. Yeah. For the schooner, its crew and guests, the excitement of the day's celebration is not over yet. I guess uh, the deck's old. Uh, taste a little champagne before it's all over today, and uh, everybody will have a good time. To tell you how proud I am would be impossible for me to describe it to you. I still want to build things and make things beautiful and things that are old and keep them around. And uh, that's what I've done with this, with this boat. For Ray Giovannone, the crew and staff of the Schooner America, it has been two years of untiring devotion to the project. Mr. Ray's dream of showcasing American boating and industry to the world is finally coming true. America, we wish you the best. Dreams do come true if you work at them hard enough. Tell me where